guys welcome back to some more afk arena in today's video we're going to be going over kind of a lot of different things guys so stay through the video um i'm going to go through kind of the focuses that we've been looking at starting with early game um looking at some of the heroes looking at some of the builds and i'm also going to tell you about some of the kind of tips and tricks that i kind of utilize in afk arena um to continue making progression in here so looking at the factions guys i'm um, building out a couple key specific heroes especially when you're looking earlier game, including Scarlet guys, absolutely a big priority. Palmer is a big priority as well. Now, a lot of these heroes, you're going to see them in the Twisted Realm and Cursed Realm, kind of a crossover um, that we've seen. And we've also seen a lot of these heroes within the Treasure Scramble, a um, couple different modes, but looking at the heroes um, that are kind of required and heroes like Rain have fallen out of pretty much everything at this point. So there are a few in here that are not really utilized anymore. Um, but overall, Estrilda even seems to be replaced with the new Celestial Hero in a lot of different formations. Rosaline used significantly within the Lightbearer faction. Now looking at the Maulers, of course, guys, the Awakened Heroes, which we'll discuss in a little bit. But looking in here, guys, Kren absolutely building out. Anasta building out. Um, Scarath with the Three of Nine Furniture as a build out. Um, we also do have Scrag in here. When you look at this faction in its utility and looking at almost its entirety... Um, not really that many other heroes that are utilized in here. Even when you look at, you know, Nemitsu, Citrena, um, when you look at Warwick, Warwick's already been replaced. Um, most of the heroes within this faction are not really utilized in a lot of AFK Arena, which is kind of sad because I do like the faction, but overall, again, a little bit of a lower utility, but making sure that you focus on the primary heroes. Now in here, guys, Mishka, Astar, absolutely. Iran for the five pull. Raku in here. Like in here, even early game will work incredibly well. Nevi will work well. Um, even Orin. Orin does require a significant investment. But when you have them earlier, um, does work incredibly well. Looking at our Greyborn, we have Grez, we have Silas, we have Oden. Will work again incredibly well. Um, one that I kind of neglected in here is Treznar. Treznar being built, again, works exceptionally well within the tower, within um, a lot of different game modes. Hodgkin, the same. Hodgkin not as a tank, but Hodgkin actually as a buffer. Then, of course, guys, Damon. Damon is a very solid carry through AFK Arena. Again, focusing on building out some of these heroes. So as we look at our Celestials, um, going through here, honestly, big one, of course, is the Twins. It has always been the Twins since the hero has ever come out. Um, followed by Alna. Now, a lot of players were kind of questioning Alna, which is coming out of the next event, guys. Alna needs her 9 of 9 furniture. This is really the big driving factor with Alna. So when you actually start doing summons within the Stargazer, Alna will be a high priority because of the 9 of 9 furniture. Now, we are seeing her still in multiple game modes, not as prevalent as we once seen her, but she is still used in a lot of different game modes. She also does have utility within the Grand Hunt in a couple different places um, because she offers the immunity. So even if you're fighting a burst team, the immunity is still there, guys. Again, twins, very, very important to build. But we've seen a lot more prevalence with heroes like Halos. And then, of course, looking over here, Zorath, Lucretia. Lucretia still being the strongest hero probably to build within AFK Arena. Um, short of possibly Ainz again when you start getting into later game. Ayn's really not too prevalent anymore um, as you continue through there. So a couple things that I really focus on, guys, in where I think a lot of players kind of lose track of what they're doing in here is I keep a list. I literally have a book here um, that I utilize for AFK Arena, and I keep a list of the heroes that I'm working on. So if you follow the live streams, if you caught some of the videos, um, really the focus on the heroes is, is what you have to do in this game. Um, depending, or honestly, regardless of where you are in AFK Arena. So currently right now, um, when you think of the game, th there's really a couple different things you want to focus on. Is one, the Awakened Heroes. So the Awakened Heroes are game changer and they do work incredibly well even earlier. So as you get to the point of starting to get your time emblems, as you get to the point of start unlocking the Temple of Time, you want to choose which hero you're going to build with and what hero that you're gonna develop. Because essentially, even looking here, guys, um, having Taylene at Mythic Plus works incredibly well. Also being a carry within the Celestial Tower works incredibly well. Now, she is not the first one that I built out or that I would recommend building out. Having a full 
faction, all, all the factions except Dimensionals with with um, the Awakened Heroes, my first choice would be Solus. Again, because of her utility, because of where she is used, Twisted Realm, Cursed Realm, um, even in PvE, even in PvP, I would build out Solus first. So now we have our Awakened Hero kind of selected as our focus. Now, out of there, guys, I would pick one or two heroes, usually one for the Celestial and the Hypogens. So this is, again, focusing resources, focusing on your builds. If you're following the live streams, we are focused on Kinesa and Rook, which means as of right now, guys, every single resource I get is going to go into leveling out and maxing out Kinesa and Rook to their optimal build with Kinesa and Rook is 30960 um, being completely maxed out. Same with every single Awakened Hero short of the Awakened version of Aziz has to be built out, guys, to have their utility, actually have all of their um, skills and abilities unlocked. So again, the, the focus has to be there. Again, this is where I feel like a lot of players can ki kind of get lost and kind of overwhelmed with AFK Arena is not having a focus of what you're building and really putting all of your priorities. So again, going back to my Awakened version of Taylene, I know she needs furniture. I know that she needs engraving. So again, saving those mats, engraving those mats, if you don't, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a bunch of heroes in AFK Arena that are kind of half built or quarter built or you're, you're gonna have too much resources. This is the reason why when we see new heroes like the new Celestial Hero, um, wait a little bit of time before we build him out. Let's see where he is used. Let's see the utility with him. Um, I am not focused uh, at building him at all at this point, literally zero focus, haven't even pulled a single copy of him because you have to stick to your guns. You have to stick to your focuses of building up, again, Kinesa and Rook, the Awakened version of Taylene. Then, of course, we know we have Mulan coming tomorrow, which is coming with the patch notes. Guys, Mulan will be here tomorrow. With that being said, you can purchase her for $50. The exchange is going to be, what, 53 days? I believe they give you like a seven day exchange window. So this is the point, guys, stop spending your resources. Stop spending the resources at all if you wanna get the dimensional hero. And again, looking at focus, looking at priority, the dimensional heroes you can get completely free are the priority guys once you have one single copy of the dimensional hero you can link them together and you can utilize that hero in a very very high level capacity just like we have here with our links works incredibly well again with the focus heroes so even looking at all of the resources that we get out of here even the curse realm things like that with our stargazer cards the engraving mats even our beast food and of course, guys, big shout out. Boom, we got the 6,300 poke coins again um, because of the, the five, six, seven, the betting strategy that we're doing. But focusing on specific heroes at a time, like I had said before, one celestial or hypogen hero is going to be your focus. And that, of course, is going to be your stargazing focus. So as you do get stargazing cards, um, and again, depending on where your account is. So the general rule when it comes to the stargazer guys is if you're at a point within the faction towers, not the specific king's tower, but if you are at a specific point in the faction towers that you're getting stargazer cards out of here, once you're getting stargazer cards in all three, or all, excuse me, all four towers early, um, you'll have the six towers, of course, a little bit later. But once you're getting stargazer cards out of here, guys, that is about the time that you want to start doing the Stargazer for Lucretia um, and starting to build her up. So again, let's say right now we're early game. Number one, Stargazer cards are going to go towards um, the twins. We want to pull at least one copy, bare minimum, probably two copies out of there when it comes to unlocking the Stargazer, again, because of their utility. Second focus, of course, with the Temple of Time would be the Awakened version of Solus. She would be the one we want to build out building her out all the way to one star. At this point, the utilization is going to be in the diamonds. Again, thinking more of an early game scenario, it is going to be a focus on building out specific faction heroes with your desired summons or just utilizing diamonds for your regular summons. Because again, when you get early game, mid game, um, a majority of the diamonds are gonna go straight into your summonings versus being spent at other avenues. Now, as we progress further into AFK Arena, again, really focusing the heroes that you want to build. 
focusing the heroes within the Oaken, the furniture summons that we get out of here with the wish list. Again, I have this little slot right here because I already have it planned. That is where Mulan is going, guys. That is really the focus of the account and where we want to build. We know Mulan is going to be required to be um, built out pretty high. So when she's released, I'm going to drop her right in here. We're going to do our summons. You can also see, guys, my other two focuses. We have the Awakened version of Taylin in here. We have Kinesa and Rook in here. Then we will add our third focus, which is, of course, Mulan, the dimensional hero in here. The rest of them kind of split between the factions is ideally the way you want to do it, just because there are a lot of faction-specific heroes that require furniture to really perform. When you look at Scarlet, when you look at Grez, when you look at you know a bunch of heroes like Mishka, um, the 9 of 9 furniture in there is very, very important to possess to go ahead and build them. Then you'll do the same with your engraving mats. So like I said, looking here, um, we have an emblem choice chest, but looking here at our engraving mats, guys, it takes what, 3750, I think it's 3750 for the elemental shards um, to go ahead and get a plus 30 engraving, which means again, looking at the focus, I have three focus heroes that we're building up to the point that they need to be built and then we will swap the focus. We will continue rotating that focus, guys, um, hero by hero by hero. And again, this allows us to not split resources amongst a bunch of different heroes, building them to the point we want to have them built, and then literally just leaving the hero alone from there, um, because essentially that is where you're going to have to really stockpile or utilize your resources. Um, look at that, a brand new subscriber does. Um, same thing with the cores. And it also is the same thing currently with the Beast Ground, guys. Now, the Beast, we also want to talk about um, the Resonating Crystal is coming tomorrow. So once we see the patch go live, the, the Beast Resonance will be up, which means that the core Beast that you want to focus on in here, just like we do with our heroes, guys, there are very specific Beasts we want to build out of here. And those Beasts, of course, are one, the Winged Lion, Wing Lion, absolutely the biggest priority, guys. I'm um, actually building up the Wing Lion much further than we have in the Resonance. And then, of course, the Owl followed by, and I still love, we're going to have to see exactly where Talisman loves our lands, but Dragon, absolutely, guys, because boosts the single target damage, which is in a lot of formations. Um, definitely a, a strong, strong build within here, guys. Those are going to be, again, still the primary builds that we're going to have within our Beast. So essentially, once you unlock this game mode, so again, thinking going early game, mid game, into later game, once you unlock the beast aspect, guys, the winged lion is going to be the primary um, focus all the way up to level six. That is where you want to build the winged lion up. And then honestly, going and building the rest of them to six. Because remember, you also do have to have one beast unlocked in to, to be able to utilize it within the resonance. Again, a little bit of changes coming to AFK Arena, but the focus, guys, I cannot stress on it enough. Even when we get some heroes, so for instance, um, we had Zafriel in here, we even have Valoris. So the thing with some of the heroes, guys, and I, I hope this really benefits, um, is if you're not focused on a hero and if you're not building a hero, again, splitting the resources is going to be very detrimental to your account. But there are a lot of heroes that a lot of players say, hey, should I take this hero to one star? And then I always answer back with, hey, do you have the engraving mats to do anything with this hero? Is this hero your focus? For instance, we built Valoris right here. Um, got her to the plus 30. We actually been putting furniture on her. Um, plus 30 in here would be decent. But again, she is not really the focus. We did add the one star on her. But again, with her not being the focus currently, um, we actually have the ability to utilize other heroes. We've seen the same with Zafriel. So Zafriel stayed at Ascended and Ascended only until I got to the point of having enough engraving mats to get him to the plus 30 engraving, which was where I wanted to build him, guys. And that is where he stays at right now. Because again, specific builds for specific heroes you can do this with everything in AFK Arena, whether it's building up the furniture, just like I did with Kinesa and Rook. We know Kinesa and Rook, I'm building up all the way. I put their T tier three gear on there. All of my red chests currently are going right into Kinesa and Rook. Um, even though we know Mulan is coming, 
every red chest that I possess, every red chest that I have is going to into Kinesa and Rook. And then depending on who I have first is going to be the engraving. So again, we have the awakened version of Taylin. We do have um, Kinesa and Rook. And then we have Mulan. Since I know Mulan is going to be bought in five star tomorrow, Mulan is actually going to take the 3750 of our engraving mats and go ahead and build them up. Now, one thing and one caveat when it comes to the dimensional heroes themselves, guys, I do not use red chests on the dimensional heroes. I wait to get them out of the labyrinth store right here with these emblems of space. It will save you an incredible amount of time um, to get your emblems out of here versus utilizing your red chest because red chests can be used on anyone, including the dimensional heroes, but the space emblems, I already have a hundred of them, so I can take her to, what, 25? And then as we continue and as we focus on doing the labyrinth, I'm going to buy more emblems of space to essentially finish out Mulan's plus 30 signature item, allowing us to, again, save all of the red chests that we get. With the major event coming up, we know there's going to be a lot of resources. Um, either you can focus your resources on specifically what you need, if it is going to be elemental cores, if it is going to be red chest, if it's going to be bait for the foods, or if it's going to be a hero, you can really focus every event. I go into event with a game plan, again, utilizing everything that I write down. Um, I go in knowing exactly what I'm going to get out of the event, what is going to be the benefit, what do I need to build out my heroes. Right now, it is going to be probably cores because I still have a lot of cores that are needed, even to take a hero to um, the plus 60 engraving like Mulan. We're, we're pretty close. We need, I think it's 4,500. I think it's 3,750 um, for the shards. And then I think it's 4,500 for the cores. Might be a little bit off, um, but essentially to make a plus 60 hero. And again, not spending all of your cores on a bunch of different heroes, but really the focus on building out specific heroes. Because I know, one, I'm going to have to take the Awakened version of Taylene to a, a plus 60 or an E60 um, engraving. Mulan the same. I'm probably going to take her to an E60. And Kinesa and Rook, I'm going to take to an E60. Which means, guys, what, 30, 13,000 plus elemental cores? It's going to take some time. And during that time, though, we're going to get new heroes. We're going to see new releases. We're going to see new beasts. We're going to see a lot of other things at AFK Arena come up. But again, going back to the core, guys, keep the focus on the heroes that you're building, which makes a really, really big difference in AFK Arena and continuing progression through here. So guys, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think and what you guys thought. Again, just something that I do, again, focusing on specific heroes, um, might take a couple weeks, might take a couple months before you get them done. But I know Javid uses a lot of the same principles, guys, really focusing on specific heroes. Because if you have half-built heroes, and this is kind of the flip side of it, um, let's say I have a hero like Mishka, and I don't have the 9 of 9 furniture because I'm building too much furniture, and I don't have the plus 60 engraving because, again, I'm kind of wishy-washy and going back with heroes. The effectiveness of a hero like Mishka will be incredibly degraded if you don't have her built up to the point that she needs to be. Um, really, then when you go into Twisted Realm or when you go into the Curse Realm or you go into different game modes, um, you're not going to find the effectiveness of the hero because the hero doesn't have the requirements to be effective. So, all right, guys, just my, my quick closing note. Um, but that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, Thank you guys for watching.